In today's video, we're covering Love Meg. Recently, Love Meg put up a paywall for some of her videos. She announced a sketchy giveaway. She's been rude to her viewers. If you need to catch up on any of that, I will link the playlist in my description box. Love Meg went to Walmart. She shared some things on Instagram, and I guess a few viewers asked her to do a haul, and this is what she had to say about it. I used to do Walmart hauls all the time until YouTube changed its algorithm and restricted me and basically forced me and all of its creators into doing videos on one thing. Pick a niche and don't go outside of that or we will kill your business. Y'all know I'm not here for it. I'm so much more than just a homemaker. Yes, homemaking is my passion, but it's not my only passion. I've missed doing these videos. With that being said, this video will have to go up at lovemeg.video for that reason. Lovemeg.video is truly the best way for me to give y'all the videos you request without being penalized for it. I'm gonna straight up just say that she's lying because I think she's lying. This is so lame. This is such a lame excuse to put up a paywall. If you wanna put up a paywall, just say you wanna make more money. You don't have to give lame excuses. She's been doing hauls on her channel since the beginning and she's never stopped. She does grocery hauls all the time and that has nothing to do with cleaning motivation. Plus, just three months ago, she did a Bath & Body Works haul on her channel. She put it in her thumbnail. She put Bath & Body Works in her title, thumbnail, and description and got almost 50,000 views in December of last year. And that's good for her channel. It doesn't seem like she's being penalized for putting up hauls. And check out this thumbnail. It says, hang with us today, cleaning, Amazon finds, and self-care. In the title, she has Amazon haul. Doesn't seem like she's being penalized. She got over 50,000 views on this video and it was posted about six months ago. I don't know why she's trying to spin this false narrative. It's just not true. There's evidence that what she's saying is just not true. I talk about YouTubers being transparent all the time, and this is what I mean. In situations like this, they need to be transparent and just say what it is because people will respect you more for just being honest about the situation. The day she announced her paid membership, she lost a thousand subscribers on Instagram. And I recently checked Social Blade. She's lost a total of 2,000 subscribers on YouTube since she made that announcement. I'm so excited to do this financial Q&A because I feel like it's going to be like life-changing and... Okay, hold on a second. Did she just say that she's about to give away information in this video that's going to change someone's life? Really? The way we think about money is totally different from the way a lot of people think about money. And it's so clear whenever you get these questions and it's like, you don't have to think about it this way. You can think about it this way instead and it'll solve all your problems and she's sensationalizing this a little bit i think just changing the way you think about money will not solve all your problems it also takes action i said this in a previous video but at one point love meg had a life coach and part of a life coach's job is to change your mindset on certain topics that you're having issues with in your life and i think money was one of those issues for her because she grew up not having a lot of money she got married and struggled so I think the life coach helped her in this area I feel like it's just gonna be life-changing because like whenever we started thinking about money and life in general in this specific way that's when our life changed so I do believe your mindset around money is important I do agree with her on that but I don't think I would pay her eight dollars and seventy-five cents to listen to her talk about money mindset, I would go listen to someone like Tony Robbins, someone who is crazy successful, someone who has made millions and millions of dollars, a professional in this area, someone who manages multiple businesses. I mean, can you even compare the two? Tony Robbins, Love Meg, Tony Robbins, Love Meg, you know, what would you do? And that's when um, opportunities came to us and we obviously started making more money and it was life-changing for us. So I cannot wait to share all of that with you guys. She's already shared this many times on her YouTube channel, but that manifesting video that she made about her house, in that video, she talks about how she changed her mindset around money, buying a house, closing on a house, all of those things, and how it helped her. 
I know some people believe in manifesting, some don't, each to their own, but having a positive money mindset is a way of thinking about money that helps you change your negative views and allows you to believe you will be successful with money. It keeps your financial focus on good things. It enables you to create beliefs that aren't limiting or negative, but instead help you make a great financial future for yourself. Also the fact that Justin and I are so different, I feel like you'll get two points of views but combined because we both like agree with each other when it comes to stuff like this but also like the way we think about it is a little different so okay let's break this down so this is what influencers do they go off and they read books and they hire life coaches and they learn all the things and then they come back to their social media platform and charge their viewers for the information they learned they incorporate a little bit of their story into this. This is how coaches are built. You first have to improve yourself, work on yourself, and then you can help others improve. You can coach others to make improvements in their lives. It's interesting to me that influencers literally can be one step ahead of the viewers when it comes to information, and they feel like they have the authority on something and can charge you for this information when you could just go to the library and read the same book they read, and then you don't have to pay them for this information. In the previous video I made about Love Meg, I will link it in the description box, but she talked about incorporating her kids back into her content and letting them blog. Uscreen, the platform she's using for her paid membership, specifically says in their rules and guidelines, child exploitation is not allowed on their platform. You screen content restrictions. You may not upload any content that is sexually explicit, exploits or endangers minors. There's a whole list of content that is not allowed on Uscreen. So all these family channels, all these YouTube moms that are running over to Uscreen, you can't exploit your kids over there either. But they probably don't know that because they don't do a lot of research before starting things. We all know that. Next, I know she wants to create a video all about how to grow your YouTube channel, but she's already talked about this so many times. She's already given her tips. Her tips are pretty ordinary tips. Everybody says these things. She says, choose a niche, collab so you can get your channel in front of lots of eyes, consistency, and advertising your channel on different platforms. You could use Google and find those answers. It's funny that she says, choose a niche that you're passionate about as her first tip, but currently she's complaining about her niche. She feels stuck in her niche. She wants out of this box that she feels stuck in. She wants to do something different, but her first tip to you guys is to get yourself in a niche. It's kind of strange. Tell me what your thoughts are down below. I know y'all got some thoughts and opinions on this and I'm dying to hear them. Check me out on Instagram and TikTok at YouTuber Headlines. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.